All right, folks, today we're going to talk about something that I never thought I needed, but it turns out I kind of like it, and that is a laptop cooling pad. I've kind of always been on the laptop cooling pad hate train for no real reason. I just didn't like the idea of them, and, you know, it seemed like, uh, you don't really get that much gains, you don't really get that much reduced temperature, you know, they can be a little big and cumbersome, but I am a changed man, okay? When Lano reached out to me, I kind of brushed it off, to be honest for months just because of the way I already felt about laptop cooling pads but you know they insisted they sent me a free unit and I was like all right let me just try this out you know I'm probably not gonna like it but it turns out I was wrong I love this thing so I figured I'd give it a quick review here just to show you guys some nice ways to improve your laptop's thermals without too much headache the team over at Lano was actually super helpful and nice and they're willing to give one of these away to one of you guys all you have to do is leave a comment below and I'll randomly pick someone in the next few days to get a free laptop cooling pad but you can also get these on amazon i have links in the description below so definitely follow the links in the description to get yours anyways let's get into it so this is the Lano V12. Um, it has RGB, so that's really cool already. It's sort of reminiscent of Alienware, the design language is at least. This one in particular is built for 15 to 18 or 19 inch laptops. So even though I'm using it with my G14 here, it still works really well. They have a smaller one, the V10, which I'll also be covering in another video. But yeah, just to talk about some of the features real quick, you get lots of different options for lighting. I really like this one where it kind of changes colors around the entire cooling pad. You have this neat little LED display. You have these little holders right here that prop up that can hold your laptop in place. And then you also have little pop out legs on the back to lift the cooling pad up and increase airflow. Now this one's interesting because it uses one giant fan. Uh, it's a five and a half inch diameter fan in the middle. So I thought that was kind of interesting rather than using a bunch of smaller fans on this one. Um, you also get three USB-A ports from this uh, USB-C hub right here, which is kind of cool. And then your laptop itself is going to sit on this memory foam pad right here. Overall, it's a pretty neat looking design. I mean, I'm not, I can't complain. I'll I like the RGB, you know, maybe it could be a little slimmer, but then again, they sell smaller versions of these. So you have your options, but super easy to use. All you really got to do is hold the power button and turn it on and then use this dial right here to decrease or increase the fan speed. And that's really it. So let's go ahead and just break into this thing, test it out and see what kind of numbers we're going to get. Cause I know that's what y'all really care about here. And I was genuinely surprised cause I thought it was only going to make a few degrees of a difference, but it genuinely shocked me how much more of a difference it made than I thought it would. So first we're going to focus strictly on CPU and then we're going to go into more synthetic benchmarks and then gaming. So stick around because there's definitely some interesting results here. Side note, if you just like really detailed laptop reviews like this, charts and graphs, but also some subjective opinions on just laptops and accessories and tech, things like that, I would love if you subscribe to the channel, I'm trying to get more videos out and I'm getting closer every day to being able to make this a full-time thing. So greatly appreciated. Anyways, let's get back to the video. So starting with CPU, so I used Cinebench R23, and I'm very familiar with how the G14 reacts in this benchmark. It hits a cap of 80 watts and usually hits its thermal limit on the CPU, which is 95 degrees Celsius, which in general is fine because that's what these CPUs are designed for, and this is a stress test that's pushing it to the very max that it can go. And it's a 14-inch laptop, so I mean, come on. But you'll see here on stock turbo profile, you know, no cooling pad, it climbs up to 95, it starts off at 80 watts, hitting the full 80 watts, and then it slowly goes down down to about 73, which is where it tapers off. So this indicates, you know, a little bit of a throttle happening. You're getting that full performance for like, you know, 10 to 30 seconds, and then you're getting only seven watts less, but you know, it's still not the full 80 watts sustained. So I went ahead and just set the laptop on the cooling pad and I put it at the very minimum setting, which is 300 RPM. You can barely hear it at this low of a arc, but it's already making a big difference. So yes, we're still hitting just about 94, 95 degrees, but you can see that C CPU wattage is now increasing. It's getting much closer to sustaining that full 80 watts, getting about 76, 77. Now, if we bump it up to 800 RPM, which is a little bit louder, but check this out. Now we're not even thermal throttling anymore. It's kind of a really slow climb up to 91, 92 degrees, but we're hitting the full 80 watts pretty much the whole time. So that's really cool to see. We're hitting the full CPU performance, the maximum it can give, and we're not throttling at all. And then just to see what it would do, I went ahead and just put it at the very maximum fan speed, which is 2800 RPM. And yeah, it's loud, but check this out. So now we're topping out at 
only 83 degrees and it is hitting that full 80 watts the entire time so that's pretty cool and yeah if you notice the score isn't really increasing very much between these runs but you know it's something i'm not undervolting or anything but i am about to here in this last example uh you can use g helper to actually push the g14 past its 80 watt limit so in g helper here i'm going to set it to 90 watts and undervolt the cpu a bit and now let's see what we can get so here we are going past the limitations of this device and it does actually hit 90 watts and kind of sustains about 83 to 85 watts the rest of the run and it still doesn't hit the 95 degree limit so i mean that's actually pretty crazy to see and sure enough that gets us over 18,000 cinebench score on a 7940 hs which is really good so i'm definitely happy with those cinebench results now let's check out time spy which is more of a gpu benchmark and that's going to show us how our gpu can benefit from this cooling pad so first i'm going to start running time spy just stock no cooling pad and i'm going to have the decibel meter right here in the bottom corner so you can see what the fan noise is but yeah you tend to get about you know mid 70s on the gpu high 60s or low 70s on the cpu in this benchmark but then as soon as we throw the cooling pad on there even at the lowest rpm so now we're in the mid to upper 60s and low 60s on the cpu which is really cool to see and it actually leads to a, i mean a slightly higher benchmark result both of these results are a tiny bit lower than what i usually get because i had a bunch of programs and overlays open on this but as you can see though it does have a positive effect on the score even at the lowest rpm and that cooling pad at 300 rpm is actually quieter than just the laptop by itself and turbo so for me personally that's like my favorite way to use this thing it's just on the lowest rpm and then just getting you know a little bit of a free drop in temps i mean that's super nice so now we're going to bump this thing up to 800 here and let's see what we're looking at we're going to compare all of them now so again temps drop even more at 800 rpm no surprise about four or five degrees less on the gpu about four or five degrees less on the cpu which is crazy to see especially at this point in the time spy benchmark you know cpu not even hitting 60 degrees and gpu like in the low to mid 60s like that is crazy on a 14 inch laptop so again this leads to a higher score we've now broken over 18,000. so again the cpu can kind of be hit or miss in time spy but hey our graphics score did go up a little bit more now over 18,000. so that's pretty cool now let's bump this thing up to 2800 rpm at the max fan speed so let's see what happens okay i got all four going here on the screen and it does seem like that max fan speed helps the gpu hit those extra few watts with again another drop in temperatures now in the low 60s on the gpu and mid 50s on the cpu just insane for a laptop this small so i was genuinely surprised how good cooling pad did here that bumped our graphics score up almost another 100 points at 18,087. and again i probably could have gotten up a bit higher than that if i didn't have so many programs open but yeah let's see how this thing does in games so right off the bat you can see again it's like four or five degrees between each level of fan speed here you know 72 degrees on the gpu just at 300 rpm cpu is not even hitting 70 and then at 800 rpm you're hitting low 60s high 60s on gpu at 57 decibels which you know is pretty loud but there's a lot of gaming laptops out there like you know stuff from acer that hits 60 decibels on their own and then at the max fan speed you know those temps are just too low to be real like crazy unheard of temperatures right there for a 14 inch laptop putting out that much wattage now if you've seen my videos you all know me and i like to always push the limits even further if possible and that's where a v bios flash comes in so i've done this before on my g14 but i wanted to see what it would do with the cooling pad basically i'm tricking the g14 here into thinking that it has a full powered 4090 from a 16 inch laptop the scar 16 which means it's going to run at 175 watts on this 4090 in this little 14 inch laptop which normally will make it throttle but we're going to see what happens so on a normal time spy run with this v bios you can see it does pretty good and then eventually it throttles it hits about 85 degrees and then that causes the wattage to go from 175 down to like 135 or even dipping into 120 or lower the cpu also likes to eat extra wattage when it's in this mode you can see it wanting to use 35 watts when before it was only using like 18 20 watts here so it's basically just the laptop thinks it has a lot more wattage output which can work out well if you know how to tune these things you know in stock the score you get at the end i mean 19,500 just about it's still really good that's better than stock but it could definitely be higher than that for 175 watts let's just throw a cooling pad on it you know see what happens so i went ahead and just started at a thousand rpm here because this is a lot of wattage the minimum fan speed is just not going to suffice so at a thousand rpm so roughly you know 57 58 decibels we drop our cpu temps about five degrees and our gpu temps about five degrees but what you'll notice is not only is there a drop in temperature but an increase in wattage used so now we've given ourselves more thermal headroom so now the gpu can boost higher it's getting closer to that 175 watts without
without having to try as hard. It's not throttling. And then sure enough, by the end of the run, we have a much higher score on the GPU. Yeah, so now here we are, 21,253 graphics score, like much better. And now we're in line with, you know, some of the big 4090 laptops out there. If instead we go all the way to the max fan speed, you can see it drops temps by a considerable amount again, almost 10 degrees off the GPU and about eight or nine degrees off of the CPU. So now we're hitting mid 80s on the CPU, high 70s on the GPU, hitting the basically full 175 watts, just about in about 40 to 45 watts on the CPU, which is a crazy amount of wattage to come out of a 14 inch laptop. And again, we get an even better graphic score hitting almost 22,000, although not sure what happened to my CPU score there, but you get the point. And with some tweaks, this led to me getting pretty insane scores, you know, just from overclocking or disabling boost, things like that. So really fun to play around with this. Um, and then I went ahead and booted up control here, put the fan speed around 900 RPM. It wasn't too crazy loud, um, but yeah, you can see in games, this is pretty nice. You're hitting upper 70s at the full 175 watts. Uh, CPU isn't having to do too much work in this game, so it stays in the low 70s. So yeah, with this cooling pad, I mean, you could absolutely daily run the 175 watt VBIOS on this laptop without really any tweaking at all. You can just run it full turbo, full speed, and just let it run. Normally I'm having to, you know, cut it down to 150 watts, do clock limits and undervolting to get it where I want it. But with this cooling pad, I can just let it run free. And then lastly, we're just going to do a fan noise comparison here, just so you can kind of hear the differences in the different fan noises. So here you go. Now, I know you probably noticed that 2800 RPM is definitely super loud. And yeah, it is. Um, personally, I wouldn't recommend it without some noise canceling headphones. Cause yeah, I mean, even if you're like on the mic, I think your microphone will probably pick that up even with noise canceling. So, you know, it's great for like single player or benchmarking or things like that, where you can just have noise canceling headphones and not have to worry about it. So yeah, overall, I mean, I'm just kind of surprised how much I ended up liking this thing. Again, like I said, I didn't go into this thinking I would even like it. I didn't even actually plan on making a review until I actually actually tried it out and realized that it's pretty cool product. So again, there you have it, the Lano V12 gaming laptop cooling pad. I highly recommend it. I have links in the description for where you can buy it. And like I said, Lano was actually cool with me giving one of these away to someone who comments on this video. So just make sure you leave a comment below and I'll randomly pick someone to get a free laptop cooling pad. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope that some of you found it helpful. And if you did, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Again, thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.